Today we're on day 21 of building our daily art habit. Now, today I'm going to be painting some pears and I'm going to be concentrating on trying to get that painterly effect that I was talking about when I did the apples, but um, I didn't end up doing that with the apples. So I'm gonna try and do that today with my pears. So let's go and get painting. So here I've set up my still life again and I've got my light shining from this direction this time. And I've fiddled around with different angles by taking different photos to see what angle I wanted to paint in. So there are my nice pears. I actually went to the supermarket and had a look to see what nice pears they had. And as you can see, there's nothing fancy about the setup. It's just a cardboard box. This here is just a cardboard box that I've covered in some black paper. And I'm using my little lamp here on a funny angle because I wanted to get those nice shadows and, and where the light was shining because when I just had it coming from above it was pretty boring. So you don't need a fancy setup to set up a little still life so you can see just how the shadows are going and also like that cast reflection that you can see. Let's zoom in a bit, Let's see if you can see that. With this cast reflection you can see the colour reflecting off the pier onto the tabletop so I also like that as well so I'll be trying to put that in too. So I've done a quick sketch of my pears and now I'm going to do the background. So I've mixed up my palette and tried to get the colours as close as I can to the pier just so that it's easy for me when I start painting I don't have to stop and start mixing colours I can just concentrate on the painting. So so sort of my wall, -y, wall colours around the outside of the pier and my table colours and my pier colours. And I've just used ultramarine blue, Chameon Yellow Light, which is a lemon yellow in my brand of paint, raw umber, burnt sienna and some white. So I've mixed all those colours from there my iPad next to me and I've taken a photo and I've turned it into black and white so I can get a really good look at the tones and things as I'm painting as well as looking at the real thing. So I'm pretty neutral background this time so I'm not going to spend lots of time on the background. So first of all I'm going to put in the shadow I'm going to start putting the shadow in on the pier. I'm 
and to stop me getting too fiddly and get that painted painterly kind of effect that I'm going for I'm actually standing up this time instead of sitting down so I can move around a bit more So I'm doing kind of the same method as I did the underpainting for the apples, but instead of just doing an underpainting, I'm actually using the colours that it's going to be. So I'm basically just blocking in the colours here. And because it hasn't got a, a ground on it first, I'm going to have to do more than one coat for the colour because that white canvas is kind of distracting. And maybe I should have done a coloured ground before I started. Might be able to hear in the background that it's raining here today quite heavily, so you might be able to hear the rain falling. Nice background noise. So I'm going to do something a bit radical here. I'm 
I kind of regret not doing that coloured ground in the first place. So I've actually got some yellow ochre here in my glazing medium and I'm just going to go over the whole thing with my glazing medium to just to warm up the whole canvas. I've warmed up the whole canvas here. I've actually had to turn the overhead light on as well because it's getting darker and darker here. And I'm just going to make sure that this is all dry before I do any more. So I'm going to go back and do my um, pears again. So I'm just putting my basic tones in. So, as usual, I'm running out of time this morning. It's actually already quarter to one. Had a few errands to run this morning. I was being very good, and after listening to all my motivational videos and passing on that information to you about, you know, just go on and get on with it and arts made to be seen and all that kind of stuff I've actually got myself organized and applied for three art shows so far so I had to send one of my applications off today because it was a bit late getting away and it was one that I couldn't do online so I had to post it so it had to go this morning or it wouldn't have made it in time So I got that sent away this morning and then by the time I went to the supermarket and picked up my perfect pears for this picture and um, set up my still life and things, it was already 12 o'clock so I, um, my painting time was cut short today but that's okay because I was still doing things that are going to help me in my art. I've actually got an acceptance back already for one of my art shows to say they um, one of the ones where you have to submit your work online and then they critique it and say whether they'll accept it or not so I've already had one of those accepted so that's really good. One of the other ones I won't know until I actually go to the show and see if they've hung them or not. Because all the art shows work in, in different ways like that. And the one I sent off today doesn't actually do critiques. They, as long as your work isn't offensive or anything, they will put it in the show. So I've done those three, and I've got two more that I've got plans to, to go in. Just One of them I just have to get the form filled out, and the other one I have to figure out what I'm going to put in it. It's so easy to get fiddly instead of doing this painterly thing. 
I've suddenly realised, oh, I'm getting a bit fiddly there. I have to change my brush stroke a bit and make it less fiddly and more painterly. I think one of the things with trying to make it more painterly is working wet in wet helps. So if you can work quite quickly on wet and wet, it becomes more painterly than if you're working over dry. What I did when I was mixing my colours to try and get my colours right, I actually put my brush up against the pear to see, well it was actually my palette knife, but when I was mixing the colours to see if they were actually going to be the right colours. Whether you can hear that, but it's raining even harder now. Even though it's nearly one o'clock, I have no desire to go outside to go home because um, I'm going to get soaked. <laughs> photo really helps me with my tones and things but to get all those subtleties with the colour and things that actual real still life setup helps a lot more with that
So I'm kind of using a few cross hitch kind of movements to keep my brush strokes. have a slightly darker version of this because I think I want to make that shadow there a bit darker and that's a bit green. It's amazing when you mix up your colours and you think oh that looks really brown and then you put it on what you're doing and it doesn't look the same at all. So in my palette, let's see if I can show you, in my palette I'm actually using this colour here which looks very brown but when I put it on here it translates as very green. It's quite fascinating what colours will do when they're next to each other. Oh, I find it quite fascinating. So I'm thinking my center of interest is going to be this highlighted bit here. So I'm darkening up a bit around there to make that center of interest really pop when I put the brightest highlight in there. Now tomorrow I know I have to go into Hastings, we've got a doctor's appointment so I'm not going to be having a lot of time tomorrow to paint but I also might not have um, the will to paint depending on how the doctor visits go so I need to find something to do tomorrow that's very easy to achieve and fun or I may just carry on with this I'll have to see how I feel once I come back
if you um, struggle with having too smooth a canvas, um, too smooth a paint on your canvas or, or building up enough colour in that, trying to show your brush strokes in that can be a good way to get over that because you need to use thicker paint to be able to see your brush strokes. So if you um, a good exercise in making sure you don't get too fiddly is use thicker paint. As I said, not every painting you do has to be a masterpiece. You should be striving to do your best, but um, sometimes just having the freedom to say, okay, this is going to be a practice piece for learning a particular thing can be quite freeing, and you can just forget about trying to make it perfect to, to sell or to show other people you can just concentrate on what you're trying to achieve. So today I'm just concentrating on trying to get that more kind of painterly effect but still get that 3D look going on with my Piers. So I'm going to stop here today. I've got a nice painterly looking effects going on my pears and they're getting some good shape going on them. There's still quite a bit of work to do on this one but I think I've made a really good start and I'm going to stop and brave the weather and go and get my lunch. So hope you got your paints out today too and happy painting everyone and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! So as you can see it's raining just a little bit here.